Last time on Unity Basics, we talked about what scriptable objects were, so how about we go about implementing them in this episode. We will be creating a scriptable object that can save and load the health and position of the character in the game world. So let's sit back, relax, and learn how to implement scriptable objects in Unity 3D with C Sharp. <laughs> So to begin, let's create three scripts. The very first one we will be creating is going to be called player data. The next one will be player data SO, which stands for scriptable object. And the last one will be called player data handler. So these are our three scripts that we're going to be using. So very first thing we're going to do here is we're going to create a cube. And we'll leave it at that for now. So now let's go ahead and open up Visual Studio. And the very first thing we want to do is we want to create our player data scriptable object. So if you clicked on the wrong one, that's fine it up here we'll go to player data so let's do a little bit of cleaning up here there now for the scriptable object we actually want to inherit from scriptable object instead of mono behavior so scriptable object and the next thing we want to do is we actually want to use an attribute called create asset menu and this will go above the class so let's go ahead and do that create asset menu file name and we need to put the string player data after that menu name and we're going to call this player health and position and finally order and we're going to set that to be one always save your data so we're going to create three items within the scriptable object the very first one will be a string so public string object name and we're going to set that to be stored player data simple enough next up we're going to create a public vector 3 and we're going to call this position and then finally a public float and we're going to call this health and that's all we need to do for our scriptable object. Pretty straightforward, right? Nothing too complex, nothing really too much new besides the create asset menu. So the next thing we want to do is we want to work on the player data handler. So let's select that class. And housekeeping for sanity's sake. And Again, we want to remove the inheritance, and this time we're actually going to completely remove it and just have it a regular class. <clears throat> so the very first thing we want to do here is we want to create a menu item. So menu item, and then using Unity Editor. This is important. So menu item, let's start that over. Menu item there and then we're gonna say assets slash create slash stored player data and then we will do public static void create asset there we go now the next thing we need to do is we need to call that scriptable object. So player data so asset equals scriptable object dot create instance. Yep. And we actually want to do the lazy evaluation of player data so. Done. 
Next thing we want to do is use the asset database. Now, again, uh, in the description below, there will actually be a link to all of these references or the reference to all of these new items that we're using in this tutorial. So I digress. Asset database that create asset. The very first argument, we're going to put asset. And the next argument, assets slash stored player data dot asset. Next thing we're going to do is asset database dot save assets. The third thing is another brand new one. This is editor utility. There we go. And focus project window. Again, a link will be in the description that will tell you more about this. And finally, selection, which is another brand new one. Active object is set to asset. So a link will be in the description for all of these. I'm reiterating this. So if you are confused about what these mean, you will have a link to what they are. Because I couldn't be bothered to actually write a script and detail all of this. I started to and then I got lazy. I digress. Let's move on. So we're going to create two more uh, methods here. We're going to create a public static void load asset. And we're going to do a string array called result is equal to asset database or set to asset database find assets stored player data and then if the result dot length is not equal to zero string path equal is set to asset database dot guid to asset path and then result the array of zero. Finally, asset database dot load asset at path. So load asset at path. Path and then type of. And then since we want stored data, we want to call player data so. And then finally, our third one, which is public static void update data. And then we're going to need player data. Data equal is set to new player data. And then create, or sorry, player data so asset equals new player data so and we're going to leave that blank for now since we don't have player data filled in yet so let's go ahead and navigate over to there and fill in all of our data shall we so some sanity checking and this will inherit from mono behavior so the very first thing we're going to want to do here is public uh, player data so player data. So we're calling that uh, scriptable object. Next up, public float. And just for my own sanity, I'm going to do an underscore current help. And then a public vector three and do current position. Void start. We're going to need void start, and we're also going to need, oops, void update. <sighs> so the very first thing we want to do here is, in the start method, is we want to do the load asset method. So that will be in player data handler dot load asset. 
and then underscore current position is set to player data dot position and then current health is set to player data dot health straightforward simple we know how that works or at least we should now before we get into uh, any button inputs or anything we definitely need to make sure that this dot transform dot position is set to current current position there save it always save always save and now we can do our if statements and we're going to do if statements for our key inputs so follow along here what I'm going to do is if input dot get key and then key code w current position plus equals zero point actually no one f let's keep it simple oh wait what am i doing sorry so vector three Vector three dot forward times time dot delta time. And we're going to do this for forward, backwards, left, right. So that's four. So there we go. Now we'll do since W is forward, A will be left, S will be down. D will be right. So let's go ahead and change S to be back. A will be left, and then D will be right. There. Now we can do one more if statement. And this is just so that we can change that current health. So let's do that now. And we'll make that the P key. Not PD, P key. So what we want is player data dot health is set to current health. Then player data dot position is set to current position. And then store, oops, wrong method name. Uh, what I call this? Uh, oops. Player data handler dot update data. So there we go. We have everything implemented now. So we can just save this and we can go back into Unity. Now on the cube, we want to attach the player data. Now we will see that player data requires a player, player data scriptable object. So what we're going to do here is in assets, create player health and position. And our player data has been created, which we can then attach. So now we can change our position press P and it automatically updates. Now we did do one thing incorrectly. We forgot to implement uh, changing the health value. So if input dot get key, a uh, key code dot space. current health minus equals one. There. So now we can go back to Unity and we can always set the default health. So let's actually do that here. We'll go back into the code. 
current health equals 100. There. So we'll start off at 100. So before we do anything, let's actually delete this player data. Assets create, player health and position. And then we'll run it. And then we'll also press that space bar and then press P. Oops. No, we forgot to do. There. There we go. We'll change that location. And then press P. And now when we load it back up, current health, negative 53, current position. So that's how you can load and save data using scriptable objects in Unity 3D. Now we could actually set in the scriptable object, as we could see that the current health did not reflect. We could go into the scriptable object and say public float health equals 100, is set to 100. Go back into Unity, delete the player data. Go back into create one, there we go. The health is already preset at 100. Load that there. Then we'll run it one more time. We'll change the position. You know what, we'll bring it further up. Let's bring it right here in the camera, right in the face of the camera. Oh yeah. And then we'll change that health to 66. And then we'll press P to save. There. So as you can see right here in the script, it says it's all set to zero. When we load, current health 66 and set to position. Well, that concludes this tutorial. And I do have a Discord. And I also follow Saiku's Discord. So if you follow Saiku and you're in his Discord, you can chat with me there or follow me on my own Discord, which is linked in the description below. Thanks for watching.